Praise the Lord and God bless you. Welcome to 10 Minute Midday Manor. 10 minutes in the Word of God to bless your lunch hour whenever you're able to view. Thank God for you being with us on today. Today we want to look at a subject that uh, brings about a lot of tension this day and time. And that's the uh, war with the spirit world as well as discernment. And man, we'll look at that coming right up. Amen. Praise the Lord again. I thank you for being with us today. Praise God. Amen. My name is Christopher Harrison, pastor of Triumph Church, Roanoke. Amen. Our contact information is at the lower portion of your screen. Social media outlets are in the lower corner as well. Uh, we ask you to join us. Like, comment, subscribe. And if you care about anybody, share it with somebody. Amen. That they can be blessed by a brief look in the Word of God. I don't want to get too deep today, but I do want to look at the Word of God and just talk briefly. Um, some things dealing with Ephesians chapter 6, as well as 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, a couple of verses there. But just a reaction to some things uh, lately we've uh, been dealing with or looking at. For Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Looking at it again out of the Amplified Bible, it says, For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, uh, it says contending only with physical opponents, but against the despotisms, meaning some uh, authoritarianism, some power. Uh, rulers, uh, aggressive rulers, what despotism means, um, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness and the heavenly supernatural sphere. Um, the point I, I want to make in this, and, and I don't want this to be an intellectual thing about what principalities and powers, I've always thought of them as different rulers over different areas uh, of responsibility in part of Satan's kingdom. Um, just as we have governors and presidents and, and delegates and different people that have different reigns of authority and power, the same thing we go up against uh, when we're in certain cities, certain areas, certain houses, um, rulers who have uh, a fake control or fake rule over a certain uh, jurisdiction. Of course, God is the only ruler. He's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And so these powers are allowed to exist until the fullness of times come. Um, but when we look at it, we look at um, not this being an intellectual thing, but we want to look at the mindset of the believer and what it has to be and how uh, nowadays everybody wants to talk about discernment, but they don't really understand exactly uh what it means um and and everybody wants to say the discernment they read a person's face when they frown and they say oh i know what they're thinking well no you're just reading their face but discernment goes beyond that into uh understanding if things are of the spirit or not there are times when you get engaged or go into some places or hear people talk and um your spirit within you will alert or and it ain't like a dog a pointer dog or something but it is in its own way the spirit will speak to you when situations places persons things ideas decisions are um not up to snuff and are not of god and sometimes uh people or, or or areas that you go into can be a not of uh god you can feel the presence of evil or the presence of uh, things God can speak to you um, about objects. I heard a testimony of someone was gifted some objects, and the Lord spoke to them to don't take them home, don't put them in the house, throw them out away from the house. And um, why? Because we understand that people curse objects, and they would love to put a cursed object in your house. They would love to get into your house and curse your house and, and cause uh, your house to be cursed. Now, 
Uh, I got the scripture already up, but this is what we're talking about when we're talking about warring in the spirit. A lot of times we don't understand we wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against the people, um, but the people's actions sometimes have a negative and a demonic or devilish uh, uh, source. I'm going say demonic, they possess. It don't mean they're demon-possessed and they'll start speaking in, in evil tongues, but sometimes they allow the thoughts of Satan, the thoughts of the flesh, and the thoughts of rebellion. I wish I had that scripture up, but the Bible says rebellion is as of the sin of witchcraft. A lot of people have rebellious thoughts against the things of God. They will, from time to time, do things to try to uh, stamp out or even delay, just minor delay. Uh, to cause issues with what God wants to do through his church, through his manservant, through those people that call on the name of the Lord. And that's witchcraft. That is a, a spiritually influenced desire to harm the kingdom of God or the plan that God has for the life. And somebody said, that's crazy. You talk about possessed dolls and possessed stuff. I believe that those things and objects that you place in your house can bring about a negative influence. I believe that shows that you watch and, and things that you hear. Uh, you need to be careful about the music that you listen to. You need to be careful about the TV shows that you watch. And they're doing all these incantations and saying all these things that you don't know the, me know the meaning to. Your spirit uh, sometimes will cringe at the thought of someone speaking those things in your presence into the atmosphere of your dwelling. But when you deal with these things, you begin to bring these things up. Uh, the scripture here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 says the natural person, the person that whole mind is on natural things. They, Everything's got to be 2 plus 2, dirt, earth, and everything else. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. So when we talk about warring out the spirit things and spirit entities in your house, um, a lot of times people will say, well, you're crazy. Well, we don't care what you feel about us. We don't care uh, how you mock how we praise God, mock how we dance, mock how we speak in tongues, mock because a natural person, a person who is logically, you can read the Bible, put two and two together and come up with your own formulation of what God wants. But the Bible is spiritually, bro, spiritually discerned right there in the scripture. Let me read it. The natural person does not accept the things of the spirit of God for they are folly to him. Oh, it's just crazy. And he's not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but he is himself to be judged not by anyone, judged by no one. But they are spiritually discerned. So you don't understand and you think it's folly or think it's far-fetched when pastors tell their congregants not to listen to certain music. Um, but look at the words. Look at how some of your favorite female R&B, country, whatever they're doing now. Look at the words of what they're saying. Energies they talk about. Look up the word. You done bought the CD or whatever. I don't know if they buy CDs no more. You done download the music or you plug it into your Spotify. Um, look at the words of what you're singing. And anytime you hear the universe, anytime you hear energy or energies, Look at the descriptive word, the adjective for that type of energy. Everybody talks about energy and colored energy, purple energy, green. Look at that. That is not that is not of God. Look at the source of those things or the source of those ideas. I can see it. It's not too much now. Because people want you to believe that doing evil is the same as doing God. That witchcraft, all witchcraft is not the same as good. There's godly witches and things. No. No. We're not using the creation. We're using faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Anything beyond what he commands. If it's not of faith, it is of sin. But to take earth and water and air and uh, hair, blood droppings, dolls, plying it and sticking this out of a doll and speaking uh, words over it to try to apply it to somebody uh, that's witchcraft. 
you know, the church is trying to do something positive, but you're going to try to do whatever you can to stop it from being as successful as it can be. That's witchcraft. You've been assigned by Satan to promote witchcraft, and you need to repent. You need to come to the altar and repent. When you've had the mindset to say, well, I'm not going to uh, operate in this manner. I'm going to, uh, like Ananias and Sapphire, I'm going to steal from the program. And so we have to be careful. I knew I was going to run out of time on this one. We have to be careful. These are the things we fight. So when we come in the house of God, we're in there and witchcraft is in there. We're in there and witchcraft is on the outside with, with uh, trying to uh, destroy the work of the church. But we have to make sure that uh, we're serious when we come into the house of God. And that our actions there aren't there to buck, scream, and shout. But when we buck, scream, and shout, we're doing the work that brings freedom to the individuals, to ourselves, and to the individuals in our congregation. You can laugh at speaking in tongues. You can laugh at praying. You can laugh about the church. You can laugh at giving offerings and tenth and all of that. You can laugh at it all. But those who want to mind the spirit don't mind doing what the Lord requires. I got to stop. Maybe we'll pick it up again if we see fit. But let us be sure not to just be natural minded and thinking everything is logical. If something ain't working the way God wants it to work or you think God's hand is, is being stopped, uh, maybe it is. So war in the spirit through prayer, through fasting, so that God's message can get through. Amen. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you is my prayer. I look forward to seeing you next time. Join us 10.30 a.m. on Sundays, 420 South Pollard Street, there at the bottom of your screen. And uh, we'd love to have you. Or catch us online. Tomorrow night we'll be online with Conversations at 7.30 p.m. And then we'll love uh, to have you uh, with us. God bless you. Uh, on the same page. Like, comment, subscribe. YouTube, subscribe. Facebook, like. Instagram follow, uh, Triumph Church One Oak. And if you want to be a part and, and know when we're having services, just uh, text CONNECT, C O N N E C T, to 540 917 5545, or text PRAYER to the same number, and we will pray with you over your issue. God bless you. Have a smile upon you. It's my prayer in Jesus' name.